Welcome to Kingdom Talk Radio Hour with Dennis McCourt, founder of God Hope Ministries. Kingdom Talk is where Christ is King, and we are the subjects and citizens of the Kingdom of God. Oh, yes, we are. Kingdom Talk Radio. That's Talk Radio 1550 KXCX, the best talk in town. We're here every Saturday talking all things Kingdom. We're taking a stand in the spirit of Christ, speaking the truth in love. And we have, as always, we have, or most of the time anyways, we have Loto <laughs> here from Loto Ministries. Amen. Good afternoon, everybody. Good it's, to be here, Dennis. It is. It's great. And we're just tuning into the Lord. We're di dialing into heaven. We are praying and asking God to give us revelation knowledge of Jesus Christ and how do we move forward in these very troubling times. Philville will be joining us again next week, we trust. He's out to taking care of business. But um, we are just grateful that we have this opportunity to align ourselves with heaven. You know, we need to be those who, when we say, you know, that's the Lord's will, that we are sure that we are walking in his will and that we understand his will. So we'll be reading from the scriptures. We're not going to be shying back as we broadcast live from the mm. luxurious studios here in Fresno, the Manchester Studios reverberating off the foothills of the Sierras and back into the valley, bringing the good news gospel of the kingdom of God. And we're going to be talking about how do we know the will of God and how do we walk in it out of uh, the epistle of the first, the first epistle, first John, that John the apostle wrote by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and getting some insights there from God and his word as we look at these issues. But we have uh, first of all, a great report regarding the crisis in the class classroom conference that we aired here on Saturday night here at KXCX uh, exclusively from 1550 here. We broadcasted from 7 to 10 o'clock last Saturday night, this conference. We had great speakers. I was there. We had a table there with God Hope. We're going to talk about this crisis, but not just talk. We're going to demonstrate how we take a stand. What do we do? We're not just raising our voices at the school board meetings, although we're doing that. We're also bringing solutions, kingdom solutions Amen. that is really kind of a pre-evangelism because people see, wow, these people are standing for what's good and right. Who are they? Well, they're the disciples of Jesus Christ. Mm. So crisis in the classroom. We'll also be talking about this European official that says, we have the rules regarding free speech. Uh, she is uh, the VP of Values and Transparency. Uh, Loto, and uh, she's basically deciding she can determine what's free speech. Uh, I think there's something called the First Amendment in the Constitution. Is that is that way in at all? Yes, sir. What separates us from all the other nations. There you go. So we're going to be uh, talking about that. We're also going to look at George Santos, who, uh, you know, is has really had some character problems mm -hmm. uh, and reached the level, in my humble opinion, uh, uh, unqualified unqualified and i believe the republican party is making a huge mistake by not pulling him away he's 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 been lying about so many different things but also that he was doing drag dress he was drag queen uh dress up and all that in in uh in uh brazil and it was his response to that that makes me clearly say he's not qualified because rather than saying that was wrong what i did was wrong it was in my youthfulness it was something i shouldn't do he basically said that, well, accuse me of having a life. That's not repentance. So we're going to get further into that here on Kingdom Talk. And then we also have a pastor, a black pastor who, uh, uh, you know, uh, trusted CNN, right, uh, has an article about him. I say that with tongue in cheek, but that, uh, that he's the closest thing that we have to Martin Luther King today is what they're saying. And he is saying that Christian nationalism is a heresy. All right, well, let's talk about that. There are other heresies out there like liberation theology, that's for sure, which is Marxism merging with the gospel. But is Christian nationalism a heresy? We're going to talk about that. We're going to ask some questions, and we're going to uh, look at the scriptures. At how does God's word weigh into this? Because we are wanting to interpret our world through the scriptures. It's not the opposite, which some do where they interpret the scriptures through the world. What a difference, huh? Yes. One is exegesis, pulling from the scriptures what's mm -hmm. there. Eisegesis is reading into the scriptures something that's not there. Mm. And we are definitely for exegesis here on Kingdom Praise Talk God. Radio. And because, you know, the really this battle, Loto, is the battle of Logos 
versus chaos. Mm. Jesus is the Logos. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God, and all things were created by Him. Without Him was not anything created that was created. And we need to understand that Jesus Christ is the Word, and we have been given revelation knowledge of Jesus. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 1, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, which we have handled mm. of the word of life. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. So, so they handled Jesus. They touched him. He wasn't just a phantom or a spirit. He was the physical person, the divine human. And we see here in 1 John, it says, For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. And we've been learning here in 1 John how that, that one of the themes, along with a faith, obedience, and love being the litmus test for true regeneration or new birth, uh, one of the other uh, themes is manifestation of God, the manifestation of the Father, the Son, uh, you know, uh, through the Spirit uh, in 1 John. So that's amazing to see here that the apostles are manifesting or giving revelation knowledge of Jesus Christ. And Loto, it really does take the Holy Spirit to get an understanding of Jesus, doesn't it? Yes, it's, it's amazing. And, and just to, from the Bible study this morning, there was so much good knowledge that, that I, I gleaned from it, yeah, especially um, how intentional John was in the words that he used and the way that he used the words especially when it comes to handling Jesus, you know, for those who, you know, who, who, who have a theology that assumes that Jesus was just a great idea yeah. or that his life was just this great concept. It wasn't really anything real. It's just the, this Bible. It's just the really good stories, you know, really good stories of, of uh, good examples of morality, you know, but, but uh, some people believe like none of this happened. There was no wow. David Goliath. There was no, you know, uh, 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 Samson. There was no Abraham. You know, they, they were just Good, good stories. Well, that's so important, Loto, because yes. we're talking about the historical reality yes, sir. of Jesus Christ. Yeah. But not only Jesus, the historical reality of uh, the times, the mm -hmm. places, the geography, yes. the kings, the rulers, that, that our faith is rooted in reality. Amen. Okay? Amen. And this is so important because there's there's so many other religions out there that's mythology and all kinds of, you know, millions of different mm -hmm. myths and gods and all these kind of things, you know, uh, Let's face it, you know, but the reality is, is that we do have the truth. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we have a faith that is tethered to reality. Yes, absolutely. Our, our religion is not one just based on concept. This is actually real life, literal things that happen, you know. So it, it, it just brings a lot more surety to, 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 to my faith, you know. Um I used to always wonder, like, man, you know, like, you know, is this Bible real, you know? And how do I know that these people wrote the Bible? You know, well, you have to come to a place where you have to make a decision. Do you believe what the Bible come says on. or not, you know? Check and, the box. Yeah, you know, and for me, it's, um, I mean, you had 500 people that witnessed the ascending of Jesus, you know, and the resurrection of Jesus, you know? And so, you know, that, that that's just First step, like, do you actually believe that these were real witnesses? I choose to believe these were real witnesses, and these things uh, recorded in the Bible actually really happened. And we choose to believe it based upon good reason. Yes. We have yes. good reason. Now, the yeah. thing is, is that uh, our faith is founded upon reality, Come on. truth. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and there's nothing in science that contradicts our, no. our, our, nope. our or hi, uh, history, geography, yep. anthropology, zoology. Uh, yeah, all of it. Yeah, right. So, so now sometimes uh, our faith transcends what we know, yes, sir. So that, but it never contradicts what we do that, know. That, yes, that's Amen. the thing. That's the beauty of it. Amen. Uh, and so um, it's interesting. One one uh, speaker had, had talked about how that um, that that you know our faith is 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 solid, and there's things that that we can know and things that we can't know. You know, but uh, he he said that God gives us enough evidence of his reality. Yes. That that uh that faith is not unreasonable. But yes. not so much evidence that faith is not necessary. Isn't that good? That is so good. And uh, yes, because faith is required. Yes, it does. We have to 
we have to do we do take a step out yes. you know onto the water you yeah know? we step out but we step out on good ground solid based on reality history geography i mean uh, uh science you know nothing in science true good science nothing in good science contradicts not uh what we know to be true in this from the scriptures not at all all science does is you know and, and thank you for saying that dennis because a lot of christians are scared of science oh yeah we, we shouldn't be science no. doesn't you said it science doesn't contradict god science it, it, it reveals god's wisdom yeah it reveals his divinity it Love reveals it. his sovereignty you know reveals his wisdom yes. the logos yes and this is what we're talking about here yeah. on kingdom talk Radio, that's 1550KXEX, the best talk in town. We're talking about the wisdom of God, the logos versus chaos. Amen. And so what's amazing is is that uh, John the Apostle in the Gospel of John, in mm. the beginning was the Word, and the yes. Word was with God. That The word there in the Greek is logos, and there was uh, Greek philosophy, uh, Hierocletus uh, in uh, the 5th century B.C., believe it or not, early on was talking about the wisdom. Wisdom was the uh, creator of the world. Wisdom was the order of the world. Mm. Wisdom uh, was uh, the, um, the, the principle upon which you know, reality was based. And so John, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, he is addressing and giving an apologetic or a correction to the Greek philosophers there in the Gospel of John. Yes. Because he says, wisdom is not just a principle or an idea. Wisdom is a person. Yes. In the beginning was the Logos, the wisdom of God. Yes. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God, and all things were created by Him without anything. Without Him was not anything created that was created. In Him was light, and it was the life of the world. They said, so the Greek philosophers were saying that the, the, the light, you know, was the, was the logos and all that, but they didn't understand that, that Jesus, the person, the preexistent divine son of God is the wisdom of God. He is the logos. Yes. He is the creator of the world. And at the same time, Loto, by God's divine wisdom mm -hmm. uh, there through the apostle Paul writing scripture by inspiration. Yeah. He is also refuting the uh, common, uh, say, conventional Jewish rabbinical thought mm -hmm. there of the first century that the Torah uh, was uh, the creator. The Torah was with God the, from the beginning, okay? And that the, 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 the Torah was the light of the world and so on. But then we learn from Revelation again, divine inspiration, we learn that Jesus is the Word, and it says in John 1, 14, and the Word was made flesh. There you go. Tangible. Yes. Yeah. Time in history. The Word was made flesh. So this also is a refutation of Gnosticism. Now, for our listeners, this is important to know. It's basically yes. a New Age kind of a thought, which isn't new at all. Very recycled, yeah. Recycled mm -hmm. age thought. Yes. <laughs> new Age thought that basically there's the cosmic Christ, that's the Spirit, and we are all Christ. They're falsely teaching and then we just need to believe and know that we are God. We need to believe that we are Christ. And so it's it's a cosmic Christ. We need to just have that understanding that uh, the material world is not real, only that which is uh, non-physical. And so it sets up this massive heresy, this massive deception that John the Apostle is refuting early on. It's nascent Gnosticism, early mm. on Gnosticism at the very beginning. And not only that, Paul deals with it in Colossians. He deals with it in his pastoral epistles as well. And so we're looking into God's word so that we can navigate these times. And we're going to see here in 1 John that he says uh, that it is the last days. And we know it is because the Antichrist has already entered into the world. Yes. Yeah. You know, this is, you just illustrated the problem with um, practically every single uh, false religion. Yeah. And, and theology, yeah. whether it's religious uh, theology or self-help philosophy, mm -hmm. they, they will go right up. They'll, they'll talk about wisdom. They'll talk about knowledge, enlightenment. They'll talk about how you get joy, how you get peace. Mm. They'll go right up to that Whoa. point, right up, but, but stop short of Jesus. Oh, it's amazing, Loto. Uh, a while back in Palo Alto in the Bay yes. Area, uh, I was there in uh, Mountain View, and there's a an East-West bookstore there. It's a... Uh, 
uh, a, I'd say, new age mm-hmm. kind of bookstore, really, uh, and a lot of Hinduism and so on, pantheism and all that. And there was a speaker there, and she was talking about the the the, uh, the cosmic Christ, and um, and she made a misstatement, uh, and and I raised my hand, and I, I so I asked her a question. I ended up meeting her. She invited me to her 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 basically commune there in Palo Alto. Mm. Uh, I, I won't mention the name of the group, but um, I ended up going. She was talking to the founder of her group in India at the time. He was actually a, 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 a white male who mm. uh, started his own version of this uh, kind of new age teaching. And uh, so we, we, we sat down and we talked for hours about her faith. And she mm. talked about nirvana and the seven levels of perfection and yes. the process and all yeah. the wisdom and the insight and all that. And I said, so I asked her, I said, let me ask you after, after like two or three hours of going back and forth, I asked her, I said, so what's, what's more important to you in your spiritual journey? Is it, uh, is it the path towards perfection and coming to nirvana and full knowledge and all of the wisdom, or is it devotion to your guru? And she said, oh, hands down, it's all about the journey. It's all about the path to nirvana and, and the wisdom and, and perfection and all that. I said, well, that's the difference between your faith and my faith, because yeah. my faith is all about my guru, Jesus Christ, yes. the Son of God. He's all about my Savior, and it's in relationship with the person of Jesus Christ yeah. by faith that I then, yes, I get wisdom and knowledge, and I grow up into uh, wholeness and healing, <laughs> okay? But, yeah. but, but it's all Amen. about Jesus. Yes. Isn't that a great contrast there? It's, it's so awesome because here's the other difference between us and a lot of false religions is that we actually get to walk on the path with our guru. Hallelujah. With our guru. You know that, because remember, he said that he is the way. Come on. He, he, the so he way doesn't to just the point the way. He says, I am also the truth. Oh. You know, so he, he doesn't just point the way. He'll give us the map, you know. But then he also says, I am the life. I am the only way that you can walk this path. So that's why we always need his presence, right? And so, you know, the other crazy thing about what you're talking about is all of this, again, it's recycled. The devil has no new weapons. There's no new tactics. The devil has nothing new. This has its roots all the way back in the Garden of Eden. Yeah. And remember where, where, where the fruit came from and what tree. It was yeah. the tree of knowledge. Yeah. Of, uh, you know, of good and evil. And what was the devil's tactic? God just want, doesn't want you to be like him. God just doesn't want you to be like him. And so again, now you know. So, so a lot of a lot of you know these, these false religions, they're chasing things that to, to make themselves God, or they're chasing wisdom, they're chasing the, the you know knowledge and all that. But again, all these things they're chasing, but just comes up just short of Jesus Christ and acknowledging that Jesus is the way, that He is the truth, and that, that He is the life. Yes, He is. In fact, that was the name of the movement of the followers of Jesus. It was yes, called the, the way. way. Yes. The way, and Jesus said, uh, you know, there in uh, John, uh, John uh, fourteen, fourteen yes. you know, you know, he says that where I'm going, you know, and the way, you know. Mm. And then Philip says, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? And he says, uh, Jesus says, you know, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yes. No man can come into the Father yeah. except by me. So Jesus is the way to the Father. Yes. And so he he is the way to eternal life. And he says in John seventeen, he says, this is eternal life that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, Man. whom I have sent. So, um, so you know, we're, we're so grateful to be in Amen. the way, in Christ, Amen. walking in relationship, because truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. We yes. see in First John there. Yeah. But going on in First John, we're going to talk more about this going forward in Kingdom Talk Radio. Wow. We're going to be looking at the Antichrist here. Yeah. And uh, I want to want to announce that we got Kingdom Talk coming uh, with Pastor Charlie Avila, uh, where it's Kingdom Talk 2.0, Praise going God. deeper into the scriptures. Amen. He's an amazing teacher. Oh, yeah. We'll be talking about eschatology and time things, and also how to discern between false doctrine and true doctrine from scripture, and Amen. also false teachers and cults and all that, because he's an, uh, I, I'll just say it, I think he's an expert on these things. Oh, amazing Bible teacher. Yes. And yes. so. That's going to be a, a great thing. We'll be announcing the time frame for that. But, you know, he says here in 1 John, going forward in chapter 2, verse 18, he says, Little children, it is the last hour. Mm. As you have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists 
whereby we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. Yeah. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. They went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of mm -hmm. us. But you have a anointing, an unction from the Holy One, and you know these things. You know all things here. Yeah. So, so we're going to be talking about this. You know, one thing I want to say right up front. You know, he says we're in the last hour. That was 2,000 years ago he was saying that. In mm -hmm. the scriptures, the last days, the end times, okay, was from the time of Jesus' resurrection going mm. forward, okay? Some people have a hard time with that. They think, well, geez, you know, the last days aren't until just prior to or the last seven years or whatever. No. Biblically speaking, the apostles were in the last days. I mean, we see it right there in Acts 2. He gets up uh, there in the day of Pentecost. Peter gets up. And it was prophesied, in the last days I will pour out of my spirit, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. And on my spirit and my handmaids I'll pour out my spirit. So that, he was in the last days then. So the last days, biblically speaking, is the last 2,000 years. And so we have here this mention of Antichrist, but also Antichrists in the plural. So... So really, that word anti is antichristos in the mm. Greek, uh, meaning in place of or against, but in place of Christ. Uh, there are those who come that come to, 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 to say, I am Christ. I, I want to tell you this, and we're going to get more into this in Kingdom Talk. And we're going to talk about, there's a, 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 a cult here in Fresno that believes the founder of their movement, right here in Fresno, I'm telling you, right in downtown. Yeah. I'm going to be careful. I don't want to create any unnecessary uh, sure. uh, people there. But but the point is, they believe the founder of their church is Almighty God. Yeah. I, I kid you not. He died, and the new found, the wife, his wife is, is Mother God. She's Almighty Mother God. Loto, they're right here in Fresno. They are aggressively proselytizing. I'm talking about going out into the malls, going... They are proselytizing. I've sat down with them and, and, and opened the scriptures, and I'm like, please, please. When Jesus comes a second time, he says, every eye shall see him. He's, if they say he's in the desert, if he's in a secret place, don't follow them. He says, as the lightning comes from the east and the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. It says, uh, those who pierced him shall see him. You know, this is not some secret coming. This is for all to see. He'll come with a trumpet blast at the last trump with a voice, you know, loud voice. It's going to be a glorious coming when he comes and he sends with angels in, in his glory and sit on the throne of his glory. And so these poor people are being duped by an antichrist yeah. right here in Fresno, but it's actually worldwide. They have three million followers. Jeez. And so at some point, if the Lord leads, I may mention the name of that group. Uh, but I'm actually meeting with them and bringing the good news Praise of the God. gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, I'm not recommending for everybody to do that. Uh, it, you know, if you're, uh, you know, called to do that and you're equipped and you're an evangelist and you have good understanding of, of biblical doctrine, then fine. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend even, you know, fraternizing with them, but uh, I'm approaching it as an evangelistic opportunity because we have to discern between wolves that are devouring the sheep and yes. the sheep that are being devoured. Some of those people uh, are ones that when they hear the truth, that God will give them revelation and they'll be plucked out of the fire. Yeah, they, they, that, that's, that's just more uh, of the reality that we're in a community where there's people starving spiritually. Yeah starving spiritually and, and they will grasp onto practically anything that looks like God. Yeah. And so we're talking about this, this deception, the antichrist system, which is largely going to be a new age deception. It's the idea. We are all God. We need to just honor everybody. Every, it doesn't matter what they do. They're, they're divine. You're okay. I'm okay. You know, this whole idea that uh, we just have to realize that we are Christ. And there's going to be, uh, there's, there's a system an antichrist system. It's a it's a geopolitical revelation thirteen, mm. worldwide economic revelation eighteen, and false religious system revelation seventeen. And we're gonna be talking about that more going forward, but but we have to recognize that the, this this system is rearing its ugly head right now. 
Yeah. And I'll just say this straight up. As a Bible student and teacher, uh, I understand that Europe has a big part to play in the end time scenario with regards to this system because we know that the fourth beast of Daniel 7 is Rome. It's that exceeding great and terrible beast. So for, for those of you who are not familiar with this, just bear with me. But those of you who do read the scriptures there in Bible prophecy, we understand that that fourth beast was the last beast that's mentioned, and it was Rome. Mm. And so Rome has to be revived. And lo and behold, Loto, this is exactly what's happened well. in the last 70 years. Mm. Europe, the European Union, and even NATO, but the European Union... Uh, is 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 a world hegemony. It's it's rising up, and Europe is arming like never before since since World War Two. Mm -hmm. Okay, Germany is arming. And we, you know, he who forgets history is bound liable to. is bound to repeat it, right? So, so we need to understand this when we, when when John here in First John talks about it, there are many antichrists. Um, we we need to understand that that's what's going on in our day as well because we are in the last hour. And we see here that uh, there's this European official, there's this, this article that's out, uh, and I believe it was from yeah, Fox News here. European official warns Musk era of Wild West for free speech is over. So did you hear that, listeners, to KXEX Radio? Man. The Wild West of free speech is over because we have the rules, mm -hmm. she says. And she says that uh, there will be sanctions. There will be sanctions. The VP of Values and Transparency. So now, so now, now we are looking at uh, allowing Europe to determine our values here in America. I thought there was something called the First Amendment, uh, mm -hmm. the Constitution of yeah. the United States of America. Is that is that still in play, Loto? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, right good. Right here in the, just in checking. the, the conservative well, chasm of California. Uh, yeah, the conservative chasm right Amen. here. And so, so uh, we have a we have a clip of this woman mm -hmm. who is. Uh, Saying, look, we're not. Look, we make the rules. You know, we're going to decide what free speech is. You know, and so we're not going to put up with this anymore. There's going to be sanctions. Go ahead. We do have that queued up. Let's go ahead and listen to this. There's a strong accent there, but listen in. Uh, Mr. Musk took over the Twitter with his freedom of speech absolutism. Um, we are the protectors of freedom of speech as well, but at the same time, we cannot accept, uh, for instance, the the illegal content online and so on. So uh, our message was clear. We have the rules which has to which have to be complied with and otherwise there will be sanctions. We have the rules. Uh, I, I, you know, I'm just telling you, brothers and sisters, this is, is not a laughing matter. It is, it is uh, serious. And uh, so they're uh, wanting to overreach uh, and basically get compliance. Or there will be sanctions. You think Elon Musk is worried about this? Is he wringing his, wringing his hands? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> then, uh, you know, yeah, I cannot wait for Elon Musk's uh, response to this. You know, this is uh, this is this is alarming. You know, it, it would be really, really funny if it wasn't so serious. Yeah, uh, these, these people's problem. You know, these globalists. You know, is America. But if we really be honest, they know what their real big problem is. It's not just America. Is 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 the the the, the Christian um, heritage of America? Come on, which, which gives us you know these you know. Remember last week I, on, on this show right here, I spoke about absolutism, you know, and that they're trying to get rid of ab absolutes. Well, well, that's the ongoing fight, you know. And I'm I'm thankful because because remember I said the good news is that that war is not over; it's ongoing. We just have to get up. She 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 mentioned it, it out of her own mouth. She said, Elon Musk. Is not bringing his absolutist, you know, uh, freedom of speech. You know, so they know what the issue is. It's 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 this a uh, uh, biblically founded, you know, standards that we have that that doesn't allow us to just be a part of whatever they want us to be a part of. So just like every other, you know, dictator, every other, you know, um, uh, tyranny, they want to use the laws. They want to use the rules. You know, so. You know, but I, yeah, I'm 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 gonna get some popcorn, man, and I cannot wait for Elon Musk, you know, response to all of this. It reminds me of for you older ones, um, that old Cheech and Chong, you know, sign the papers, old man. <laughs> 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 yeah, 
yeah. Our yeah. producer is in his twenties. He's laughing. He remembers. <laughs> he remembers that. That, 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 that he must, that's funny. His mom probably was the one that was listening to it. Thought I'm right. That's funny. <laughs> So, so, uh, but it is just, uh, uncanny. It's, you can't make this stuff up. Yeah. Okay. So the Euro news, uh, next reported that Europe is pushing legislation that will force mm. online platforms to remove disinformation. How about disinformation? Like there is hope in Jesus Christ for uh-huh. those who are uh, caught up in sin that you can be transformed, become a new creation and find your true identity in Jesus and not be caught up into sexual perversion and various other sins there's hope is that the kind is that what they're calling disinformation yeah exactly and they're so confused just like you know so 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 these folks this so this lady is uh vera uh, jarova vice president of uh of, get this value and transparency of the value of trans <laughs> yeah, and trans yeah all right you know that, yeah it should be called that you know but it's, it's value and, and, and transparency where is the transparency when they're trying to censor people so th- these people are completely confused again this would be funny if it wasn't so serious. It this is, is serious. This is nothing new, Dennis. Remember back, you know, when, when Clinton was president, they they tried so hard and they tried since to put us under the, the jurisdiction of the United Nations uh, court system. You know, they, they wanted us to be, you know, under the jurisdiction of the international courts mm-hmm. because this is what they had planned the whole time. They wanted us to get under that, 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 uh, that, that jurisdiction. So whatever rules they assign, legislators they assign, we have to obey, but again, we we are a God fearing nation, and we don't just give up our freedoms lightly. So 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 now you know they're doing this, and they claim that they have enough uh, support here to to uh, to have our legislators go ahead and uh, make these uh, what is it hate speech laws? You know, well we'll we'll see what we'll see about that. I see they're going to determine what's hate speech and what's not, and we do need to be speaking love and and and. It is a serious issue. You know, people are confused. We're so broken, Loto. Mm-hmm. When you look at our body politic, you know, yeah, there's so much brokenness there. When you look at education, what's going on, the crisis in the classroom, which we're going to be talking here yes. in, in a minute, but but that's, it's sad. It's broken, you know, and, and we look in the mirror and, 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 and we see brokenness. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we are tending to want to be knee-jerk, you know, conservative, knee-jerk, liberal, whatever. We need to be balanced between mercy and truth. And, you know, there was this uh, this video put out by Babylon B about Eminem, trans, you know, and all that. And it was actually, you know, it's professional and it was you know, somewhat humorous. But at the same time, I can't imagine somebody who's gone through that. Yes. Watching that and realizing, oh, my gosh, I've been duped. You know, I've been misled. Yes. Yeah. They've, they've fed me cyanide. They gave me they gave me something that looked good, but it wasn't. Mm-hmm. It was it was it was it was pleasant for the eyes. It was good desire good for food and pleasant to the eyes and desire to make one wise but lo and behold it was it was yep. the tree of death and and there's hope though there's hope you know we we would want to affirm you as a valuable creation of god Amen. we want to do that we are doing that even now if you're listening and you're confused about your sexual identity and you're going through that that God doesn't make junk. You are nope. awesomely made, fearfully and wonderfully made. You were knit in your mother's womb. And God created you, and you are an awesome man or woman that, that God wants to redeem. He wants to buy you back. He wants to purchase you from the enemy and set you free from those lies and that confusion. There is hope today if you're confused about your gender, if you're confused about your sexuality, if you're confused about you're, you're caught up in alcohol or you're committing adultery on your wife. Or you wanting to unbiblically divorce your wife? There is hope, even now. Jesus died for you. He paid yes. the price for that sin. God so loved you that He gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever, if you will believe on Him, sir, ma'am, child, young man, young woman, that that you will have eternal life. So simply just turn to Jesus right now, and let the healing balm of Jesus Christ be applied to your life. Good goodness, you know, there is a brokenness in all of us, but there's, yeah. there's that brokenness can only be filled and repaired by Jesus Christ. And Thank he wants you, to Lord. fill you right now with his spirit. Will you just say, Lord, forgive me. I've gone my own way. I've turned against you. God so loved us while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. He died for you. He died for me. He died for Loto. He died for Jeremy, our producer. 
And we are grateful that, uh, that, that you're listening in. And as the Holy Spirit draws you, sir, ma'am, he's saying, look, I will remove your sins as far as the east is from the west, never to remember them against you again. Just, just call on my name. Say, Lord, forgive me. Wash me clean. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all, not some, but all unrighteousness. Oh. Just say, thank you, Lord. You died for me. You're my Savior. I put my trust in you. I want to follow you. I want to be a disciple of yours. I want to take up my cross. I want to deny myself and follow you. Just, just, just tell him that with sincerity. Believe on him and you have salvation. Even now, hallelujah. Say, Lord, I receive your spirit as he breathes on you. He breathes life into you right now. Receive his spirit and go forward as a new creation. Hallelujah. As a man and a woman of God, he has removed your sins. You are righteous right now, even though five minutes ago, you may have been cursing. You may have even been cursing God five minutes ago, but you sincerely are repenting now. He has removed that. You are pure as the driven snow. He's given you a robes of righteousness, a garment of praise. He receives you as a son and daughter. Hallelujah. Go forward with a lift in your heel, knowing that you are loved of God. I don't care what your past is, nor does God, as long as you authentically repent, put your faith in Jesus, you can move mm. forward. That's the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And I guess, Loto, is that disinformation that, that we're putting out here? Is this, does this fit the rules? Absolutely not. Disinformation is to give you everything but Jesus. Come this on. Disinformation is to say, hey, if you change into a boy, you'll be happy. Hey, if you change into a girl, that's what you're supposed to be. Disinformation says, hey, if you drink enough of this, you'll be happy. Hey, if you smoke enough of this, you'll be happy. Hey, if you do all these other things, you'll be happy, except they don't acknowledge that Christ is the only center of joy. Then, then that's disinformation. There you go. That's the disinformation is let's follow lockstep with the statism that's coming yes. out of Europe. Yeah. Let's align with globalism. Okay. Because globalism is good. Mm. No, that's disinformation. Yeah. And, and, and you're right. They're not just uh, concerned about America or, or even free speech. No. It's about the, the Christian roots. Yes, sir. And yes, so sir. here's the thing. You know, you got, you got, you got globalism and you got Christian nationalism. These are terms that are used. We're going to talk about that in a minute more, but that, that's, it's in an interesting uh, tension there. And the reality is, is I'll take, I'll take nationalism over globalism. Mm -hmm. You know, not, not, I'm not talking about extreme nationalism. I'm talking about, you know, appreciating your country and wanting to build a better society and, and having a foundation on the constitution, which has Judeo-Christian values. That's all well and good to vote, to speak up. But, but before we move on from this, because this is such a huge issue, yes, sir. you know, is, is this idea of Europe determining what free speech. And she, says, she says that the European officials um, is going to uh, stop the, the Wild West of free speech, okay? And they're going to determine what qualifies as free speech, as illegal speech, which you, and this is what this, is what this official says, Okay. Listen to this. I can't stress this enough. Listen to this. He says, which these, these rules, these rules, they will soon also have these rules in the United States, she said to fellow World Economic Forum panelists. Okay? This, this is outrageous. This is the same World Economic Forum that's doing the Great Reset, wanting to utterly transforms society based upon a neo-socialist Marxist, soft communism, yeah. statism. And they want to determine what you're saying, whether it's disinformation or not, whether it's free speech or not. Not our constitution, not God. But here's the reality. The freedom that we have in Christ is a freedom that no government gave us. Amen. And it is a freedom that no government gave can take from us. Amen. Hallelujah. I can I think of Sir Patrick Henry. Yes. The, the great speaker there and he says, "Give me liberty or give me death." We have liberty in Christ and it's eternal. Yeah. Uh in Christ. And so so we are taking a stand here and I was talking to uh uh Guillermo Moreno, the the owner of the station mm -hmm. here about how we should we should have a new motto here at KXEX. It's the Wild West of Free Speech. 1550 KXEX. The Wild West of Free Speech. Amen. <laughs> Love it. Love it, brother. 
Praise God. You know, home, home of the Young Guns of Freedom. Come on. Home we of do. the Young Guns we of Freedom. We got some young men yes. and women that are involved here. That we're just so excited about God. With Praise even God. Our, our it, own producer here, Jeremy, real, and others. Yeah. Real quick, Dennis. This, this is, if there's any time that our political leaders, and, and I mean here locally, all the way to, to nationally, uh, DeSantis, all these who want to be president of this United States, this is the time for them to step up and respond to this. This Boy. is a direct threat on our freedom. This is a, a, a really an infringement on our rights. So, so any any leaders that that's worth their salt, and especially leaders that wants to be the president of this nation, right now is the time to step up. And I want to hear what they have to say about what this VP of values, quote unquote, uh, and transparency, you know, just threatened us with. This, uh, this is a threat this, too. Th th yeah. This is bully talk because because the good news is this is an exposed body now. These people were operating in the dark, but they've been exposed. They thought they thought uh, COVID was going to work to accomplish their goals. Well, they failed. You know, and there's there's if if you look at history, you'll see where over time these last few decades they've been trying and trying and trying, but now they they they're left without any options. So they have to come out, and now they're trying bully tactics. Now they're trying to threaten us into this. The curtain's been pulled back, and we yes, see sir. who the wizard is. Yes, sir. You Absolutely. see right there. Yep. And, and we're not going to tap our feet together and say there's no place like home because we're going out onto the streets, the highways, and the byways, oh. and we are bringing the good news of the gospel of the kingdom of, of God here on Talk Radio 1550 KXEX, the best talk in town, Kingdom Talk Radio every Saturday from 12 to 1. And we're looking at all things kingdom. We're looking at the word of God, and we're getting yes. discernment from the Lord and wanting to respond uh, in a way that is— uh, Christ-like, uh, but speaking the truth in love. And so this, this goes on here. Um, he says, I think that we have a strong reason why we have this in the criminal law. Mm. We need the platforms to simply work with the language to identify such cases. So, so this is the thing. Um, this was a Democrat just saying that right now. And so here's what we have to decide as a nation. Are we going to allow the Constitution and our Judeo-Christian principles to determine what free speech is? Mm. Or are we going to let a globalist world economic forum, a European power, determine what free speech is? Because these companies, these international companies, this is the problem with the Great Reset amongst many other things, is that, uh, is that these are international corporations that have, uh, may, are making trillions with T's, you know, with a T, trillions of dollars, uh, multi billions of dollars, and and they're wanting to continue with the greed, and they're going to be they're willing to comply. So, we're, are we going to allow America to be subsumed in a global, uh, uh, international corporate system mm. that's grabbing the levers of power and determining what free speech is and what free speech is? I say, you know, if 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 they want to cut off Twitter. In Europe, cut it off. But let's have yes. free speech in America. If they want to cut off yes. free speech from Google, from 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 Europe, cut off yep. Google. You want to cut their off freedom? Free, yep. But let's make this American principles. Yes, sir. Or are we going to conform to globalism? Are we going to expand free speech, liberty, justice for all? Or are we going to conform to statism and the global system? Are we going to allow these platforms to advance the cause of Judeo-Christian Western civilization? where there's prosperity, the most diverse society in the history of the world, the, the most races having the most wealth and, and the, the assimilation into the Judeo-Christian culture, or are we going to allow globalism to shut that down? Mm. That's the question. And unfortunately, it's these international corporate entities that are going to determine that, and they seem to be already determined. They're going to comply. They're going to walk lockstep, and we're going to, lose some of that and this is not something to be silent about um because we are going to bring hope and truth in spite of the lies and there is tremendous grace and love and mercy and compassion for those that are caught up in sin i was there myself and uh but i've been set free and i still am fighting the battle and i haven't finished the race yet Neither have you, Loto. Yes, sir, that's uh, right. But we're not going to shrink back from bringing the good no. news of the gospel of the kingdom of God. We're not going to let them determine what's disinformation. That's right. Goodness, there's children, you know, that are being misled. And and we had this conference, Crisis in the Classroom, yeah. right here in Selma on, on Saturday. 
at a Valley Life a Christian Center there with Pastor Jesse, but Jim Franklin was there. We had yes. Pastor Jim Doman from Church United, Dran mm-hmm. Reese from Salt and Light. It was a powerful time, Loto. And this is the thing. So we are taking a stand in the public arena, not just lifting up our voices at the school board meeting, mm. although we're doing that. We're wanting to bring kingdom solutions. We don't want to just be the squeaky wheel, although That's we right. are that. We're going to be that. But we want to be the, 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 the lubricant, the, 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 the oil for that squeaky wheel. Yes, sir. Okay? And bring solutions, gospel solutions, and that's what we're about is not just kingdom talk, but kingdom demonstration. Amen. And so there was amazing solutions there, but there was a panel there. You know, Paul said, we have the mind of Christ, not I have the mind of Christ. It's a corporate ascertaining of the will of God. Men and women of God coming together, praying, seeking the Lord, opening the scriptures, not unlike what we do here on Kingdom Talk every Saturday from 12 to 1. Mm. But they were coming up with these real solutions about what do we do? How do we deal with this? And, uh, you, you know, there's talking about, uh, you know, there are school board members that are stepping up, more Christians that, that are saying, look, we're going to shut down the genderification, the confusion that's going on in the schools, the indoctrination, the relearning camps that are going on, Amen. Uh, where uh, libraries are promoting LBGTQ and trans confusion and all this kind of lies. And, uh, we're going to uh, not allow for the rewriting of American history, that America was built on racism. It was not built on racism. Was there racism? Yes. Is there racism today? Yes. But it's a whole lot better today than it was back then. And it's because of the founding of our nation. Those principles that were founded in our founding documents, yeah. liberty and justice for all, all men are endowed by their created, are, are endowed by their creator and they're created equal. So, so uh, we have in, inalienable rights. Those are endowed to us by our Creator. That's right. And so, so these these principles are what has set the stage for uh, this great American experiment. Um, you, and it's, America's not perfect, and America's not the kingdom of God either. No, nope. Amen. That's right. Uh, but we can stand up in the marketplace and speak up for those principles to point people to the kingdom. And so, but they were talking about about that involvement there and speaking up and, and all of that, but also uh, exiting. If you can leave, pull out of the state. Government schools, bring your kids and homeschool them. Amen. That's a that's a good response, a healthy response. Uh, you know, we did that. We homeschooled and we did it all. We we homeschooled many years, most of the years. But we also did some public school and we did some mm-hmm. private school, depending on the need for that year. So people need to work with what means they have, right? Yes. So it's a it's a fractal problem. It needs a fractal solution. It's a multifaceted problem. Mm-hmm. It needs a multifaceted solution. And so we were there, Kingdom Talk Radio. We had a table there in the back. We had yeah. KXCX, you know, the Wild West of free speech Amen. was there. And um, and so at our table, we had resources. But, you know, God Hope, one of our outreaches, you know, amidst others, you know, uh, is to be there and to provide resources for pastors, Sunday school teachers, and parents to equip their children to take a stand against the lies regarding gender confusion and LBGTQ. Okay. So we were there doing that very thing. And, um, that's one of our outreaches. You've heard about the medical container that we're sending working Mm -hmm. with KXEX and medical ministries international, by the way, you can go to, uh, the KXEX, uh, Facebook page. And there's a link, or you can go to gothopeministry.com, mm-hmm. Got Hope Ministry singular, Got Hope Ministry all one word dot com, and you can participate in this medical container that we're sending to Uganda, which is an amazing investment because we're only having to pay for shipping. So we're sending over a half a million dollars worth of supplies to Uganda in Jesus' name to help mothers prenatal and postnatal with their babies because we're pro life from the womb to the tomb to the resurrection. So, but the other one of the other outreaches that we're doing is this speaking the truth in love here and bringing resources to parents and pastors and teachers to help our kids. Now, um, the, the reality is that, uh, there are amazing resources out there and we were able to, by God's grace, coalesce a list. We have a bibliography of resources Praise that God. it's a toolkit that, that we're providing. Uh, as far as resources, pointing people to them, 
because we're not selling anything. This is all pro bono. It's all free, mm -hmm. everything that we're doing. Um, it's actually cost us some money just putting all this together. Mm -hmm. But um, equipping books, we have uh, amazing books like I Don't Have to Choose. Uh, it's a child's book, that children's book that actually talks about how God made you. God made me. I'm a boy. Thank God I'm a boy. I don't have to choose. Really good information. Amen. We have equipping websites that we're pointing people to that deal specifically with the gender confusion, the LBGT lies. Um, amazing websites, you know, Focus on the Family is one of them, but there are several others. And this is all on our website, by the way, at gothopeministry.com. You have the list of the books, the author's names, the equipping websites. There's links there. You can click on the link and go to any one of those websites. Um, and then also we are aligning with Kirk Cameron and the Virtuous Library Reading story hours at local libraries. We already have parents that are saying, I want to do this, Loto. They want to go into our libraries here in Fresno, in Praise God. Clovis, in, in Oakers, Amen. up in the mountains. Amen. Throughout the valley. Yes. That are going to be doing library story reading hours. And there's a step-by-step -step process. On the website there at bravebooks.com, it gives us, how, what do you say when you call the library? Mm. Well, if they say this, what do you say? How do you move forward? How do you put together the library st story reading hour? Step by step, they'll hold your hand, walk you through it. So we're wanting to inspire people to have a kingdom response in love to go and stand in the public square and bring the good news of the gospel of the kingdom of God. But you can just bring it in stories. Yes. Just love those kids. Yes. And, and maybe there'll be a side conversation or maybe you even bring it, the gospel right there during your story hour, but you can just go and be who you are, be authentic in the spirit of Christ, in love and grace and mercy, but also bringing the truth Amen. of the gospel of the kingdom of God. And so there's also um, a survey that we put together uh, here. Uh, I have a, a brother that's helping me, uh, Dale Nepper. He's an author himself. And uh, there's a survey uh, that we have uh, to protect your child's faith. And so it's amazing because it's asking questions to parents. Is the school or library providing resources or teaching your children values that go against your own principles that are taught at home regarding gender, regarding sexual identity, regarding sexual preference, regarding honesty, regarding these principles, right? Yes. Even faith in God. And so what that survey does is it elicits parental awareness mm. and involvement because now they're, 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 they're realizing that they're, they're actually going to be uh, equipped to go forward and take a stand. Yeah. I just paused for a minute because I'm seeing right here on the news, White House is, uh, is sending 31 tanks to Ukraine. Um, so that's something to be praying about. But, you know, we, we are not sticking our head in the sand. We are aware of what's going on. We want to be sons of Issachar. The Bible commended this tribe of Israel, one of the 12 tribes, the, 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 the sons of Issachar, they were, they were men of understanding that understood the times to know what Israel ought to do. And God knows the end from the beginning. We've read the end of the book and we win. So we, when you see these things begin to come to pass, lift up your heads for your redemptions drawing near. Brothers and sisters, we're going to be teaching on the Battle of Armageddon here on Kingdom Talk 2.0. We're going to be going into these end time scriptures and prophecies because we want to be equipped to be able to do that. We want you to be equipped. Amen. So be looking for that. We're going to be announcing this Kingdom Talk 2.0 here in the next couple of weeks as far as the timing and all that. And we'll have uh, uh, Pastor Charlie Avila, an amazing Bible prophecy teacher, but just a teacher of the Bible. And uh, we're looking forward to that. And all these resources are available, again, on gothopeministry.com. At least we're going to be pointing you to. We're not selling anything, but we are promoting others uh, and their books and their ministries to help you because we want to just not be kingdom talk, but kingdom solutions. Mm. And so, you know, uh, this is a response to what's going on. But moving forward here, uh, you know, I want to say this. George Santos uh, is a huge problem for uh, the Republican Party. Mm. And I think that the McCarthy and others have made a big misstep by not just uh, ejecting him. He has proven himself to be unqualified in my estimation. He is not qualified to be a member of Congress. He has lied his way in regarding his resume and other lies, but he's, he's openly 
pr- you know, promoting, I'll just say it, uh, by his response, he's promoting drag queen uh, uh, demonstration, okay? Because, again, this I'm getting this from news sources, and I, I trust that they're accurate. So if they're not accurate, then I have misinformation. But it's all over the place that he is now saying that he did dress drag in Brazil when he was younger. Now, that's one thing, you know, if he did that. And, and, and he could repent and move on and receive forgiveness, and there is redemption. But the problem was more his response, Loto. It wasn't, oh, that was something wrong. I shouldn't have done it. It was my indiscretion. His response when confronted with it, when he finally admitted after lying that he didn't do it, and it appears he did it more than once. He was saying, well, I only did it once, and Accuse me of having, this is his response, accuse me of having a life. You know, that, that's not repentance. That's not, you know, disowning it and saying that's wrong or, or, or renouncing it, I should say. Yeah. Uh, and that would be a good response. Well, I mean, so, so with this, is he, I, I, I thought I heard somewhere that he's, he's actually a homosexual. He's openly gay. Yes. Openly gay. Yeah. So with the whole drag queen thing, I, I don't. I, I mean, you know, obviously we both disagree with, you know, the, that lifestyle. But did he do it in front of children, you know, and all that? Because to me, this is just a natural part of, you know, of, of I mean, not, not every homosexual goes in drags, you know, yeah. but it's just a natural progression, you know, or just a, a thing that, you know, uh, a lot of, you know, if not most, you know, homosexuals do. So I, I'm not sure. I'm not even sure why he even denied it. I'm not sure why he tried to cover it up so much, you know, uh, because... It's this. This is just this whole story is just weird. It is uh, bad that he uh, he lied and all that. Now, as far as with the Republican Party, you know, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Should we get rid of him and 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 like kick him out of the house and replace him with who? Okay. And uh, and when does the uh, the people that voted him what where, where do they have the say? Well, I want to say this. I I'm just going to say this. You can love me or leave sure, me yeah, on this. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a Republican. I'm done. I'm I'm an, imp- an independent. Well, I'm an independent. Yes. Okay. So I I think that that it's a huge problem because because all of the I think righteous indignation regarding the drag queen story hours and all that's going on mm-hmm. to then have someone in the pale of the Republican Party that is not renouncing it but saying oh I, I have a good life I was doing drag before. It's hugely problematic. It's it's potentially hypocritical, and I think that even if it wasn't, that he's proven himself to not have the character to be uh, a congressman, mm-hmm. to not be a member of the House. So that's my my estimation. And so, you know, yes, your points are well taken. I think that's true mm-hmm. that this is an extension of that lifestyle. But we do recognize that, that lifestyle is not something we want to be promoting in the body politic. Yes. Absolutely. Like I said, I'm I'm confused as why he tried so hard to cover it up. I I don't, you know. But this is this is after getting all the other stuff that he was, you know, involved, you know, that he lied about. But again, back, you know, to okay, what what's the what do we do? Do we kick them? Do we kick him out of the? How do we do that? And and when do does his voters? When do they have a you know their say? If they want to get rid of, I think they should get rid of him. Now we could. I I don't know what kind of uh what's what options you know that Kevin McCarthy has you know to to punish him or but but again what is he being punished for? Well, again, I think it's it's the fact that the 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 character issues, the lying, the the uh, character issues that are there. But you know, you you, you, you is, just you just kicked out hundred percent of the Congress. Well, that's the thing, <laughs> and we're gonna close on that high note here on Kingdom Talk. You know, we're grateful for you listening in, but we do uh, want to be praying for Congress. Amen. We want to pray for uh, those who are in power and, and just go forward knowing that God has got us in his hand and that uh, every weapon formed against us shall not prosper, the Lord says. Let's go forward in faith and grace and truth. God bless you all. We'll talk to you next week. This will continue. Amen.